Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Today we have another episode of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, and we're starting off with a Tier 6 match on South Coast. The Sherman Jumbo, Tier 6 American medium tank. Today being driven by PTPH, Tier 6 match on South Coast. You could be forgiven at first glance for thinking he was actually driving the Easy 8 but that is in fact the Jumbo. Most Jumbos use the 105mm howitzer, not the M1A2 76mm gun, which PTPH is using here. It does have fantastic gun depression though, look at that. So why is he using that 76mm gun instead of the howitzer? And I suspect the answer is probably because he just doesn't like firing gold ammunition, or can't afford to fire gold ammunition. What are you talking about, Jingles? Well, let's face it, the Sherman Jumbo is a good little tank, but it's one of those gold ammo tanks. High explosive anti-tank ammunition and that 105mm howitzer were just made to go together. Sherman Jumbos firing the howitzer as a derp jumbo with heat ammo tend to do very well. And so they should because that ammo is bloody expensive. If you're not going to fire gold ammo however, just firing high explosive ammunition with a howitzer is, well it's not bad but it's wildly inconsistent. And so PTPH, and again I'm just guessing here, I don't know exactly why he's using the 76mm, probably is doing it because he just can't afford to run. The ammunition costs that you accumulate if you are firing gold ammo with the 105mm howitzer on the jumbo. There is one other negative consequence of using this 76mm gun. If you have this gun on your jumbo, you can't use the stock turret on the jumbo. Now you might be thinking, well why is that a bad thing? <laughs> Why is it bad that he has to use the upgraded turret? Well, the upgraded turret does have 370 meters of view range. Way better than the 330 meters of view range on the stock turret. But what the stock turret has is a lot of armor. 152 millimeters at the front, the sides, and the rear. Now that, in combination with a derp, high explosive anti-tank ammunition firing howitzer, is a potent combination. The upgraded turret only has 76 millimeters of armor at the front. So there is a heavy price to pay for using this 76mm gun on the Sherman Jumbo instead of the howitzer. You're throwing away a lot of turret armour and you're basically turning your Jumbo into a much, much slower but much more heavily armoured Sherman Easy 8 And the armour on the Jumbo is very, very good. I mean, this tank in War Thunder is not a medium tank. It's in the heavy tank line. And you can see why when you actually look at the frontal armour on the Jumbo. It's got the same armour thickness on a Tier 6 medium as the Tiger Tier 7 Heavy Tank, and the frontal armour on the Jumbo is sloped. The side armour isn't terrible, but it's completely flat, 76mm. Actually, Jingles, I have to correct you here. The, the Tiger actually has 1mm more armour at the front than the Jumbo, and... Jingles? <laughs> Terribly sorry about that, folks. I, I just can't seem to get rid of these people. Well, anyway, PT has high explosive loaded in anticipation of running into enemy artillery as he comes around the flank, but then a surprise KV-1S. I don't know why I say a surprise KV-1S. Oh look, KV-1S camping the base <laughs> in World of Tanks. Although it's entirely possible he came back to defend the flank. Let's not rush the judgement. Either way, he's not doing a very good job of it. He hasn't managed to hit him once. Um, he's probably... Oh, he's hit him once, and... 76 millimeters of turret armor or not it didn't go through well it's a fairly safe bet that artillery knows he's coming now although they're not necessarily paying attention but he's just going to stop they put the killing shot into this grant and uh, clock up his second kill and then loads the high explosive once again hoping to run into the artillery now are artillery paying attention is anybody else on the enemy team paying attention? And looking at the scores, yep, somebody probably is. And there's a tree falling, somebody is definitely coming back to defend the flank. And it's the Cromwell. And this is where things get very interesting very, very quickly. He had high explosive up the spout of the gun, he fired that into the Cromwell. Cromwell was lucky that it didn't penetrate and do a lot more damage. He switches back to armour piercing, now he has the Cromwell to deal with. And it's not just the Cromwell, there are now two artillery there as well, and they're all firing at him and they miss. He sets the first artillery on fire with an armour-piercing round. He's juggling his ammunition load back to high explosives to finish off the second artillery. Now there's a Nassorn getting stuck in. It's four against two here. Finishes off the Nassorn, high explosive shell, no problem whatsoever. Now the Cromwell is all alone. 
So you've got one of the, well, two completely opposite tier 6 medium tanks here. The Jumbo, slow, heavily armoured. The Cromwell, fast, very manoeuvrable, not a lot of armour. Now the Cromwell did the smart thing and he killed the faster of the two tanks, the Panzer III IV first. Hoping that he can now use his superior speed and manoeuvrability to be able to dance around this rock against the slower but more heavily armoured Jumbo. But he's just not able to do any actual damage to PTPH's tank, so he's very wisely decided he has to get out of here. So he breaks contact and he gets the hell out. Gets some solid cover between himself and PT's 76mm gun. PT's been shot at, but he's not taken any damage, and he gives chase. And everybody is firing at him now. He's the last tank left alive on his team. He's never going to win by capping. He's got to kill everything on the enemy team. The Cromwell is not looking very good. One more shot, he's got him. He's consistently bouncing shot after shot after shot from the front here. They're all coming for him now, starting with the Lux and an Easy 8. And the Lux, well, it might just be a tier 4 light, but if he's got that 30mm auto cannon with 90mm of penetration, he cannot afford to let that guy get behind him. Or he's in all kinds of problems. He kills the Lux. And now, Jumbo with the 76mm gun versus the Easy 8, also with the 76mm gun. Now, the Easy 8 has the maneuverability, but and he has scored some damage. But, yeah, he's managed to kill him as well. Keep that front llama pointed towards him, and now he's got the wreck of the Easy 8 between himself and not one but two ELCs, and they're all going for him now. But he's got tanks behind him. There's a 36018 shooting him in the rear. This is not going to end well. How many more of them can he take down with him? Oh, and there goes his engine. That is pretty much the final straw. He's killed one of the ELCs, he kills the other ELC, he tries to bring the tank around. But with a dead engine, he had no chance against the 3601H, so that's that. And what that is, is Ace Tanker, Pfeiffer Effect, Arsonist, Duelist, Bruiser, Pools Medal, 10 kills, Cool Headed, survived 10 ricochets and non-penetrations in a row, at least 10 ricochets and non-penetrations in a row, High Caliber, and Top Gun. And it's just not enough, is it? <laughs> Bit of a heartbreaker. Now, uh, all right, he did get five times as many kills as the rest of his team combined, but when you're in that kind of situation, in a top-tier tank with very, very strong frontal armour, when you're being rushed by enemy tanks that are all on low health, it isn't... I'm not saying it's easy to get ten kills, of course it isn't, but it's easier than you'd expect to get a lot of kills. But at the same time, just look at the damage done. He did 2,700 damage. Every other tank on his team combined only managed to do 200 more damage than that together. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh well, what can you do? Well, we can always have another replay. This is Rex Raptor, and he's driving the Type T-34. This is the Chinese Tier 5 medium tank. It's basically a Chinese copy of the T-34. And I like the T-34, but I don't like the Type T-34. That doesn't mean it's a bad tank. I'm just hopelessly bad at driving it. And the reason I'm hopelessly bad at driving this and not the Russian T-34 is because this thing only has five degrees of gun depression. It's got among the worst gun depression of any tank in World of Tanks. And if there's one thing in World of Tanks... I mean, there's lots of things in World of Tanks that I'm bad at. But if there's one thing in World of Tanks that I'm bad at, it's driving tanks that have bad gun depression. And they don't get much worse than the Type T-34. Also... I finally relented and installed XVM for the purposes of getting the damage tracker up in the top corner of the screen, but you're also seeing player statistics. Have a look at that enemy team. This is not looking very good, is it? <laughs> I mean, Rex Raptor isn't a great player. He's a Joe Average. But, um, uh, I mean, he's just Joe Average, and he's one of the better players on his team. Look at the enemy team. This is not going to end well. Or is it? Bit of a spoiler there. <laughs> um, you know, this is a kind of weird thing with Type T34 drivers, because generally speaking, when you're in a medium tank and you get a city map, it's city maps are the, you know like Ensk, like Himmelsdorf. They're usually the kind, of, the kind of maps where tanks like that, Churchill, for example, Heavily armoured tanks, well, not like that Churchill, <laughs> heavily armoured tanks with big guns tend to do better on city maps. Not 
small, fast, lightly armoured machines like the Type T-34. And yet, Type T-34 drivers love fighting on city maps because it's flat and they don't have to worry about their terrible gun depression. But just look at the way this match is developing. They've managed to nail two of the best players on the enemy team. The Churchill 3 and one of the Hellcats. They're actually winning 4-3. <laughs> In this kind of matchup, with the kind of opposition that this enemy team has, oh, and now he's putting some shots into the Achilles, who is also one of the best players on the enemy team, you would expect those seven green players on the enemy team to be able to handle Rex Raptor's team. Oh, he's just killed another one. <laughs> you, but you would expect those green-rated players to be able to handle Rex Raptor's team here on Ensk all by themselves. And yet... They're getting their arse kicked. What the hell is going on? He's just killed an M4. He's got his sights set on that Matilda, who has his back to him. First shot. Uh, no, nothing there. Oh, oh, kill the KV-2. The KV-2, Rex. Rex, kill the KV-2. Good boy, Rex. Yes, much, much more dangerous target. Bingo. <laughs> oh, the Matilda's coming back. Yeah, let's not get shot at by the Matilda. Matilda 4 has... Well, it's got the edge in the armour, but well, they're kind of similar tanks. Um, the Matilda has thicker armour, but the armour on the Type T-34 is all sloped, and the Type T-34 is a hell of a lot more mobile. The two guns are very similar, this 57mm, and the Matilda's two-pounder. It does have very, very good penetration, though. So, how much attention do you think that Matilda's paying? Oh, a box tank. Kill the box tank. Kill the box tank. <laughs> He's just left the Matilda eating his dust. Oh, and here's another one. There goes the Achilles. Oh, he missed. Oh, 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 crap. He's taken a hit. Well, finishes off the Achilles. The leopard. The leopard doesn't know which way to look. <laughs> and there's the Matilda. Still all the way at the other end of the road. He's just, come back here, will you? I want to shoot you. He's like, ah, sorry, not today. <laughs> I've got better things to do. Yeah, I have to go and defend the cap. <laughs> you have fun back there with the rest of my team. And they're still not losing. I mean, <laughs> what the hell is going on? Things are likely to get a bit interesting now, however, because, well, those are some nasty tanks. What have we got? Hellcat, a KV-1S, and an SU-85. He misses the first shot at the KV-1S, but plants one into the SU-85, tries to scramble back and his tracks eat the shot from the KV-1S. The KV-1S is using the howitzer by the way, uses his repair kit, forces the KV-1S to back off, the SU-85 is charging him down. Takes a hit but it's his tracks again, no damage, and then a wild Hetzer appears, poor guy only has 6 health. SU-85 puts a second shot into him and disables his engine but keeps coming around after the Hetzer and watch the KV-1S. Look at this, why would you do that? I mean, obviously they're going to shoot at the Hetzer first, because it's a kill. But why would you drive out sideways on in front of a Type T-34 when you have that little health? He could have killed the Hetzer from around the side of the building, but no, no. No, this is what we do. <laughs> and now, by some miracle, it's two to one against an enemy Hellcat. There's Rex here in the Type T-34 with a damaged engine and a Churchill 3. It could still end badly. I mean, that Hellcat driver is pretty good. <laughs> we have no idea how much health he has. And they have to find him. And Hellcat's a quick machine. And, oh, there he is. There he is. He's going for the Churchill. Oh, crap, he's hit the Churchill. Come on, Churchill, do your thing. I don't know what gun the Churchill has. Six pounder, maybe? He's not going to be able to kill the Hellcat in one shot. Can he get one shot into him? He can probably take another hit from the Hellcat. The Hellcat's backed off. Neither of these machines are particular... Oh, he's, he's managed to hit him. Come on, Rex. He hasn't seen you, Rex. He doesn't know you're there. All you have to do is wait. Hello, Mr. Hellcat. <laughs> Tomato team wins the day. <laughs> now, I don't know if Rex runs the game with XVM or not. I don't know if he was actually aware of the stats of the players on the enemy team when he got this 
Radley Walters one kill away from a pools medal result. <laughs> Obviously, he's happy with the result, and it was a good result by any standard. But when you look at the team that he got that result against, it is absolutely mind-boggling. But this is what you get if you underestimate the opposition. That enemy team were probably running XVM and probably saw that they must have had something like a 75% chance to win that match and they stopped taking it seriously. And that will come back and bite you in the arse. Speaking of things that are going to bite you in the arse, it's everybody's favourite tank. And if it's not your favourite tank, why not? The Panzer II looks the cutest tank in the game. And the player having fun in the looks today is Depi Pro. Now, there have been some rumblings of discontent in previous looks replays from Chaffee and T37 drivers who have challenged the looks for its rightful position as the cutest tank in World of Tanks. And yeah, the Chaffee is a good looking tank, the T37 has a certain George Clooney style rugged charm, but you know, it's that American Hollywood movie star style good looks. It's, it's all plastic surgery and suntan and good dental work. The looks. You get a more honest style of cute with the looks. It's a good, hard-working, Teutonic style of good-looking tank. You know where you are with the looks. Your Chaffees, your T-37s and your M41 Walker Bulldogs. They're the Ben Affleck, Tom Cruise and George Clooney of the tank world. They might dazzle you with their fancy haircuts and their expensive smiles, but it's all in sincerity. There's no substance behind them. With the looks, you've got the charm of Christoph Waltz, you've got the reliability of Jürgen Prochnow, and you've got the face of Diane Kruger. With the looks, you know exactly where you stand. And if you don't agree, well, you're just wrong. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's the cutest tank in the game, so there. Um, anyway, right, that's enough talking rubbish. Just watch this replay. This is hilarious. Doesn't seem to be anything around the corner, and the SU-100 has pulled back one. He's right. Oh crap, he hasn't pulled back. Oh no, oh no, can't sit here. Drives around the corner. Oh shit, it's a Stug. <laughs> the Stug fires at somebody else. Gotta get out of here. Gotta get out of here. Gotta drive. The oh, holy crap, an AMX-40. And oh, that was close. <laughs> but trust me, you ain't seen nothing. Oh crap, there's a Jagdpanzer IV. <laughs> Get a load of this. Has the Jagdpanzer IV seen him? Has he seen him? Um, possibly. He's turning. Is he turning? It looks like he's turning. Yeah, he's turning. Oh, crap, he has seen him. Gun's reloaded, though. This is where things start getting surreal. I mean, he misses most of the shots. Puts a couple into him, and... Boom! <laughs> The Stug misses again, and team kills the Jagdpanzer IV. Debbie Pro can't believe what's going on here. I mean, right now, he quite literally does not know whether to shit or go blind. <laughs> it's just, how much luck is it possible for one tank to have? He hasn't taken a single hit. Admittedly, most of them weren't firing at him, but he nearly drove into their shots anyway. Oh, crap. Ah! <laughs> He's got him. <laughs> You see, all you Chaffees and T-37s, you are mere pretenders to the throne of the cutest and luckiest tank in the game. You know nothing. No, oh, hang on. No, 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 de no, Depi, oh, no, Depi Pro. Bad looks. You killed another, oh, I'm, I don't like you anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you had to see that, guys. That's just, that was just uncalled for. I really, I really can't apologise enough for that shocking display. I, um, I just hope there were no children watching. N nobody should have to see anything like that. N not even in a game of World of Tanks. Depi Pro, you're going to have to redeem yourself now by killing that heat-firing AMX-40. He just killed a German tank. What are we going to do to him? Oh, hello! <laughs> Surprise butt sex best kind of butt sex. Results of that game? Don't really care. <laughs> totally not the point. It's just the looks being epic, because it can. And on that bombshell, that's it for this episode of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Hope you've enjoyed it. As always, take care, and we'll catch you next time.